If you look at all of the data that is being collected by sensors, it throws out amazing amounts of information, structured, unstructured. Let's take an example of Green Horizons in China. We're helping to see the patterns, to analyze the correlations. We're able to help reduce pollutants. A great, one of my favorite little startups here in the UK, uh, uh, Bluebell. Uh, which is a bell on a bike, which gathers data from other cyclists about what's happening in the streets, about safety, etc. Crowdsourced information through the Watson Internet of Things. They actually use that to be able to make uh, their travel on the bicycle safer and better. So it's really affecting. So some of it's already happening. In Absolutely, fact, yeah. very. But what's well. this Chinese one? So how did it, how does the Internet of Things reduce pollution in, in so, China? So all of the information, whether it comes from the weather satellites from uh, uh, government information, plus social media. Watson, with its amazing capabilities to reason, uh, to correlate these patterns, and then to communicate in natural language to give insights so that the Chinese government can take action much more quickly on changes in pollutants, where they're coming from, etc. In okay. fact, a 20% reduction in the last two okay. quarters. So, I mean, one... one, one one is bewildered by the kind of potential, but at the same time, one wonders whether human beings, at the end of it, have the kind of capacity to manage this enormous data flows. And, you know, we just know there's loads of data washing over us that, that isn't captured and isn't manageable in any way. I mean, is, is this going to be the downfall of the Internet of Things, as you I, describe I think it? The, the, in, in the case of having a, a Watson capability, this cognitive capability that can help analyse this massive amount of data, you know, learn about oncology, Watson has learnt oncology, and if you take a country like India with a billion people and a thousand oncologists to have Watson helping uh, to prevent uh, uh, death from cancer using these capabilities, it's real life stuff. Mm. Um, let's talk a little about Brexit because we were talking about it with our mm. chums here and uh, the conversation didn't even finish before we had to come to you. I mean, what, what's your take on the effect it's had on our economy or is having on our economy? Well, I think we are where we are now and I think uh, uh, Pfizer uh, said it, that it's, it's actually how what actions we take. And so if we take the tech sector in the UK, you know, which is a, employs 1.5 million people, 161 billion of revenues, 500,000 software developers. This is our opportunity together to be much more agile, to be creating new startups. I think business has a very important role to help create jobs, to help really uh, drive certain innovations there are, forward. There are people who say that business, fat cats, very well-paid executives, indeed, like yourself, um, are partly to explain public disenchantment with an economic system, and a lot of the Brexit vote was simply a vote for a change in the kind of capitalism that we, we, we live in. That, that may well be the case. I think what's important now is that business, in its role to help generate jobs, to help create uh, environments where innovation flows, you know, great... Uh, you, we've seen recently, you know, Arm acquired by SoftBank and making pledges to invest further uh, uh, into the and UK. That's good. that's a good good thing? I, yeah, I, I think that, uh, you know, Arm and, and SoftBank are both partners of IBM's. They both use the Internet of Things uh, very powerfully and they've made commitments to continue investing in Cambridge and to continue to expand the impact of the Internet of Things on people's lives. Well, I, I, sh I should ask you how you reflect back on your Thomas Cook days, because actually you, the company did improve enormously under you, but it had this one enormous problem. And it, the death of two children, it occurred way before you were involved in the company at all. But the handling of it was so botched, I think everyone acknowledges that. What, what do you, as you look back on your time there, think about that and the mistakes that were made? So I, I think that, you know, the, the role to make Thomas Cook well so that it could employ the thousands of people that it employed, could uh, support the uh, customers that it had, uh, 
really to transform the business so that it could survive was very important. And of course, with the tragedy that had occurred, making sure that the health and safety approaches that we had, that this, this type of tragedy should never happen again. And if you look at the way that technology, the sensors, all of this work to make sure that the monitoring of situations that occurred don't have to occur again is a very common theme through this.